So here's a game that has quality plastered all over it, whether it be the quality of the scaffolding and of course the different uh, machinery that you're going to get in the game. The Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Whistle Mountain by Bezier Games. It plays two to four players, ages 13 and up, and it's about an hour to an hour and a half. You're going to be playing as construction workers building on Whistle Mountain. You'll be constructing little uh, types of machinery and stuff like that aside the mountain, and as you do so, leakage will occur from the mountain water is going to start pouring out, which can potentially have your workers that are building fall into the murky depths, and you'll be stuck in this kind of whirlpool. You'll be trying to save your workers and use them to build uh, from your barracks onto the mountain and if you can get them across the other side after building buildings or score points you're gonna get points for building machines building high and promoting workers your opponents are going to do the same thing as well and by the time the mountain is basically fully flooded and you built as far as you can the game will end you'll score points and whoever has the most is the winner it's by Luke Laurie and has a ton of variety it's got puzzle aspects it's got the worker placement aspect I'll go ahead show you down below what it looks like, everything that's included, and then we'll come up for my review. Welcome to Whistle Mountain, and here's the game setup for two players. However, it does play up to four. In the game, for setup, everybody will get a player board. They will get their dirigibles, which will have blimps, balloons, and zeppelins. Every player is going to get one of each resource, minus whistles, and every player after the first will get additional resources. Check the rule book. To set the game up, you're going to have different stacks of these different tiles, and place them along these edges that have dotted lines. That will be for the small, the medium, and the large machines. Each of them are also going to have three spaces where you'll flip over from the top after you shuffle them and place them down face up. Go ahead and also put two of each of the people's playing meeples in this whirlpool here. So we have blue and red and then place one in each of these little areas in the barracks. So we might end up having yellow and black here next to these red and blue if we're playing a four player game. There's a stack of these cardboard water spaces or water tiles and these will be raising throughout the game. So you will be placing them all all up here, all eight of them, and make sure this bar is attached here. This board's gonna come in four pieces. It's going to assemble the same way each time. The four Whirlpool Saving Awards will go down below here, and then you'll randomly place awards up here along the track, up to the very tip top, shuffle the rest of them and set them aside somewhere. These you got over here are gonna be set and shuffled in their specific types, but of course they can be flipped and modified when placing on the board here. And then over here, you have your upgrades. Go ahead and place them adjacent, just like you would the other decks along with the deck of cards which will also go ahead and shuffle. Make sure the resources all align somewhere within reach of all players. You have gold, coal, water, whistles, and steel. And then every player is going to get one of these guys. And how it works is based on the number of players plus one or X plus one. If a three player game you'll draw three. The first player is going to select uh, one of these guys here. Pass to the next player. They'll select one until there's only one left. Everybody should have gotten one. You'll discard that one and you won't need these starting ones anymore. I set aside the extra player boards because we don't need them in a two-player game. Then each player is going to gather two of these and they're going to select them from the top here. Each player is then going to, in order, place them down on the board here as long as they touch this water line and they'll keep the other one for themselves. They'll store it somewhere next to their board. That is going to be their little stockpile. In general, you can have as much as you want of resources in your stockpile, buildings, scaffolding, so on and so forth, but there is a limit at the end of your turn based on how many resources you can have for water, steel, gold, coal, and whistles. The uh, board here explains how the game goes. I'm just going to do a very brief overview because it's pretty simple how it works. You have two things you can do. You can take one of your dirigibles and place them on the board, whether it be the grid or on one of the sides of the board, which are these little ports here, and you'll interact, whether it be gaining resources or gaining building materials, upgrades, or carts. The other thing that you can do is return any and all dirigibles that are on this board or in these ports here back to your board, and then you can build up to three things, whether it be scaffolding, small, large, or medium buildings, and for each one you build up to the first, because the first one is free, you'll spend water. So if you want to build two extra buildings on top of the first one, totaling three, you'll spend two water. And then you'll build buildings on this board here. Another thing you can do is you can rescue a character from a whirlpool, one of your poor guys that got sucked down below. It'll cost you two gold to do that. You'll take them from here and place them on the board. And the final thing is you can just take a guy for one gold from your barracks in any of these areas here and place it on the board as well. 
The different options for, up for, for action A, I suppose, is you can spend resources on the side of the board, and if you do that, you'll gain any of the three tiles that are provided. So if I spent two coal in this port here, I could take any of these three small machines. Or if I spent three steel and two coal, I can choose any of these. Whenever you take one, you'll replace one. Over here, it'll cost whistles for additional scaffolding, but the first one is free, and these are the three ports providing. And then over here is upgrades. Upgrades will actually go into slots on your board. Once you get them, you can have a total of six, and you'll utilize them throughout the entire game. Cards function the same way, with wild resources being the, va the cost for them. And then you could also go ahead and rescue characters from the whirlpool by going to this location over here. And then the other thing you can do with your dirigibles is you can place them on the board. When you play them you'll have two options a you can place them on the grid itself you can't place them on the scaffolding but you can place them on the grid themselves you'll then collect all resources and activate all buildings that you are adjacent to or on and the way that works is in this case i would be adjacent to a water i would be adjacent to a steel i would take each of those two resources if i did something like this that would net me two water and two whistles whistles are a nice resource they are wild another thing that you can do is if the board has a building on it, we'll just go ahead and say that this has a building on it, you could take your uh, dirigible and place it on the building. It must fill in a full tile, it can't be off of it, uh, it can't be partially on, it can't be on two buildings, it has to be on a full building. And then you'll be able to activate that building and gain any adjacent resources, so in this case you would get a whistle. Those are the two ways that you can gather resources and activate machines on the board for your option A. Uh, either A, going to the ports, or B, placing on this board for resources or to activate. Now, building, building works pretty simply. So let's go ahead and say I actually have these tiles here. And let's say I did place my dirigibles out. On my turn as red, I could take all of these as an action, place them back in their ports on my starting board, and then I can take my build action. So if I had these two here, and, the, and I also have this building here, which this would have been replaced, I can then place this for free. So in this case, I could place that just like that. I would score points based on the adjacent sides. In this case, it'd be one, two, three, four, five. And then I go ahead and place another one, two, three, four, five. I get 10 points, I just instantly score it. And then I would also, after spending once, I built twice, I could spend another one for my third build and place this here. And that will allow me to score the value on top here. Another interesting thing too is, like I said, you can spend a gold to rescue a worker, or to take a worker from here, or spend two gold to rescue a worker, and you can place it on the board. You can do this in any order you want. And then when you build a building on these guys, it's going to promote them. It'll promote them to the area adjacent. So in this case, you would just track along the board here and bam, you would get this award. Awards and cards, you can play one of one of either or on, on each turn. In this case, it'll give you a wild whistle. And then that would be basically the end of your build. You would done up to your three builds. You could save or take one of your guys here and recruit them to the board. And you also promoted by building a, car uh, building, a building or a, a, a building a machine onto your character, promoting them. Another thing to note, the last thing to note, the most important thing is, when you build buildings above this danger line, the water is going to start to rise. And when it rises, it'll cover things. If it covers scaffolding or if it covers machinery, that machinery will go away or it won't be usable anymore. And if it covers characters, those characters will fall into the whirlpool, giving you minus five points at the end of the game. When all of these come out across the board for each building, basically, that you build on top of this danger line here, one of these will come out. After all of these are on the board, the game will trigger an end and everybody else will get a turn. Then you're going to score points. You'll get all the points you previously had, plus any bonuses, whether it be from the uh, upgrades you may have gotten or whether it be from any of your bonuses. And of course, you'll get minus five points points for each of your characters in the whirlpool. You'll score points for each of the characters along this ridge here, and it can go up from 10 all the way down to 1, and then of course awards, resources, and cards will provide bonuses as well. And that's pretty much the basic idea of Whistle Mountain. Let's come up and talk about it. So here's a game that has quality plastered all over it, whether it be the quality of the scaffolding and of course the different uh, machinery that you're going to get in the game, the specific types of uh, tokens you're going to be getting, whether they be the different types of dirigibles, the balloons, the Zeppelin and of course the blimp and even just down to the simple aspect of your player board having spaces where you can place your specific upgrades and of course the resource tokens. You're going to be feeling the game as you move throughout it. The story comes to life as you're trying to
trying to build up this mountain and of course creating your specific types of different machinery on your specific scaffolding that you're making. The game plays really well at two players, three and even four players. You can basically mix and match. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you, some games are usually better at lower player count or higher player count. This one does the exact same job, which is an excellent job at all of the different player counts. I love the artwork for the game. It's very whimsical. It's very lucid and it's very, very vivid and bright. I really, really enjoy the gameplay of it. All of the unique different aspects where you're building different types of engineering machinery and whatnot. And of course, your upgrades play a big role. The cards in the game make a difference as well. Certain things you don't think are going to matter as much actually turn out to matter quite a bit. We played this game live on stream, which I'll have a video up today as well. So you can see that one and see how the game is fully played if this is not enough for you. But for the most part, you got the full rules of the game. But we go into high detail in that two player playthrough and we had a great time. The first time I played this game, I got stomped. But as I learned and understood how the mechanics worked and the different types of uh, engine building aspects where you're placing your workers down and gathering certain things and utilizing them throughout the game, you'll start to see what's better and what's not as good as you continue to play. There's a bunch of different strategies, whether you're just trying to build your specific different types of uh, engineering machinery or whether you go for something more like the upgrades and resources route. Some of the upgrades will give you points at the end of the game in addition to the points that you can acquire from just simply upgrading your units. And if you don't do that, it's going to cost you. The game wants you to build. It wants you to make sure that your workers are not being thrown into the whirlpool. It has that attached storyline where your characters or workers need to kind of be gathering up onto the scaffolding area and then utilizing the buildings that you acquire to position them outside of harm's way, which is very important not only in real life when building things, but also in this game. I, when I first started this game out, I enjoyed it, but as I played it over and over again, this game started really, really rubbing uh, on me. It started, started to make me really enjoy it more and more. This is a game that's definitely staying in my collection. It is high quality, beautiful design, well implemented. The story works with the game. And interestingly enough, as I was talking about in the playthrough, it's got kind of a dark storyline where if you're not careful, your workers are going to uh, basically get washed into the whirlpool and you have to kind of keep building and keep rising yourself to fame and power and fortune as this co uh, corporate overlord kind of like stares down at you and makes sure that you're building the specific <laughs> engineering a masterpiece of their dreams and you gotta kind of keep keep your yourself from being um uh, 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 un uh, unapologetic as, the, as the, the waves kind of gather and mess with you uh this game is going to sit really well with people who enjoy worker placement if you like puzzle games and thinking you're going to be using a lot of hand-eye coordination or, or, or coordination or spatial reasoning is as you place your specific pieces down gathering points based on how you place them. Of course, the higher you place, the better, but you might not get as many points in value and whatnot. You can end the game early if you want to try and do that to score points before your opponents start kind of building their engine up. And you could also go the slow route where you're building just you know as much as you can underneath that danger line before the waters start to rise. And I think for the most part, if you're into modern gaming and you like those Euros, you like puzzles, this is one that's going to really, really hit the sweet spot for you. This would have probably been in my top five list had I not played it after making the video. Highly, highly recommend this one. It's getting my seal of approval. For those of you guys who are interested, you can go ahead and pick up this game down below. Link in the description, Whistle Mountain. Really, really enjoyed this title. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. It greatly it helps us in the algorithms, as well as, of course, watching our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. You can also see us play games just like this one there and win games. We're giving away games all the time. A game, well, for the, the last one we just for this stream, we gave away an exit game from Cosmos. Bezier does a wonderful job making games, and this one is by far one of my favorite games from them, maybe even in their top top two or three games. That's how much I really, really enjoy this one specifically. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Did you enjoy this game? Have you played it? Have you heard of it? And if you haven't, it's one you need to check out. Our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaway lists, Kickstarter lists. We have our Christmas guide up. We got our top five from Brian coming out soon. And I look forward to, for some of my audience, the ones that are in Discord, doing our little Christmas Secret Santa gift exchange. It'll be a lot of fun. And I really, I really enjoy that every single year. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to building on top of Whistle Mountain with you next time.